they need to, it is time. Okay, I'm ready. New products. This is too, not too intense today. Yeah, it is time. Short and sweet. Yeah, so, new products. Filament. Okay, yeah, this is Semiflex uh, from NinjaFlex. So, this is a flexible, uh, translucent, clear material. So, it's not the most rubbery, but it is flexible. Um, it's, uh, you can't use it with Bowdoin Drive, so just check that out. Um, but most 3D printers are okay with this. I think only the Ultimaker right now is a printer we can't carry it. But it's, it's a flexible material and it's kind of um, gummy, so um, when you print with it, uh, the resulting thing will be flexible, immovable, good for wearables. This is translucent, so it will also diffuse um, LEDs and neopixels and stuff, so that could be super handy. Um, this is the water, which is basically translucent. 1.75 millimeter, you get half a kilogram. It's a lot. And it's handy, and we like NinjaFlex and SemiFlex, so check it out. And there's some tech specs in the product page about like the durometer hardness and all that good stuff. Durometer? Durometer. 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 Andromeda? Andromeda strain. It's a good movie. Okay, next up. Headers. Do you want headers? Right? Yep. Do you want headers? Okay. These are. <laughs> ah, there's headers. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Um, this is a 2x20 surface mount extra tall header. Um, we have a bunch of these left over. We've used these for our um, Raspberry Pi hats that are like, the, the, they're, they're large, they're not like hat shaped, they're just like the, the full size of the Raspberry Pi. Um, so this connector plugs into a Raspberry Pi model B plus or 2 uh, when it has the, 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 the long header style. And it's surface mount, so it, you know you can get the full top of it available. You don't have any through hole parts. Um, it might be handy for people who want to make hats that are that are tall enough that you know when you put this on the PZ will clear the USB jacks. Basically, that's exactly how tall these are. So we have a bunch left over. We put them in the shop. So enjoy. I like these, and one of the things I like about them because they're smart. And okay. They're I, not, I mean, like, they're just headers. There's no electronics involved here. No, they're smart because you can design things that normally would require something like a selective solder machine, but instead you can use surface mount headers. Yeah. And headers don't necessarily have to always be um, hand soldered or selective um, yeah, solder machine. Yeah, they're I mean, these, these are surface mount. You know, they're not going to be as strong as through hole, but with, with 40 pads, it's They're pretty, really it's strong. Pretty strong. Like yeah. I've never had anybody have a Pi TFT where they yanked the header off or cracked off. Um, as long as you're using a pretty good PCB manufacturer, it doesn't delaminate. Uh, you should be good to go. And yeah, this, it, you can check these out on our 3.5 inch and 3.2 inch Pi TFTs. The ones that where the TFT itself is is really big. It's about the size of the Pi. You would not be able to have. Um, Headers come out because they would short against the TFT, yeah. so that's why we use surface mount headers. Okay. Anyways, I think they're cool. Okay, this is a new product. We just put this in. Woo! This is the Esquilo. I hope that's how you say it. Um, this is kind of interesting. So Esquilo. We do get like 5,000. Um, oh wait, that's the new board. I know. Um, I'm just, preview. I, um, we get a lot of requests all the time to carry dev boards, and I'm always kind of like, well, you know, like there's tons of dev boards. This one I think was interesting. Um, it's got a Cortex M4, and it has this Broadcom Wicked module over here that does Wi-Fi. It's the SN800. Um, yeah, that right. Sure. Uh, can you zoom in a little bit? That's, sure. That's, um, I know you have that ability. I can absolutely zoom in. Oh, that's great. Perfect, perfect. Like yeah. That? Stop. Okay. Okay. Bing, 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 bing. Computer, so. computer, zoom in. Okay, so it's got this Wi-Fi module over here. This is an SN800, so it's got this FCC module. Um, it's got a Freescale Cortex M4 over here. It's MK84. It's like a you know two one mega flash or something ridiculous. Um, micro SD card slot. Uh, if you want to have micro SD, it's not required, but if you want to store stuff. A micro USB connector for programming and, and power is also um, a, a buck converter with a um, 6 to 17 volt um, regulator and some LEDs and stuff. And it's kind of like the Arduino headers, whatever. I don't you know, whatever it is. It's not Arduino compatible. But what's interesting about this is that it has a web ID that is hosted on the Cortex M4. So it actually, you know, to program it, you can actually connect to it 
over the web. And so you can do that with a big loop of black or Raspberry Pi because it's running Linux and so you just like run a web server. But what, I, what I thought was interesting about this is that it's an embedded processor, so it's, so it's low power, it's very fast. You, know, you don't have to worry about Linux and like corruption of your file system, like micro SD cards, all that good stuff. Um, you, know, you can definitely battery power this if you wanted to. Um, but it has this like very powerful web programming interface. And I thought that was kind of neat. That's it. I haven't actually played with it. Um, you know, like I've checked it out. It seems kind of cool. This is kind of for like, advanced developers. Um, try it out. Let us know how it goes. I was willing to take a risk on this because I seemed like an interesting enough idea that I was like, hey, yeah, we'll carry this in the shop. And uh, I think for people who are, are interested in Internet of Things, uh, this could be a very fast and new way to, to do it. It's kind of, it's not an Arduino, it's not a Raspberry Pi, it's kind of in the middle. Okay, in the middle. In the middle. All right, tonight the star of the show besides you is Breakout. It's the TCA9548A from Texas Instruments. It's an I2C I expander. Um, we kind of needed this for a while, and I finally got around to uh, making a breakout for it because people have always asked us, like, hey, I want to connect like eight BMP085 or like Acceleron or whatever. They want to connect a whole bunch of an I2C sensor to one Arduino, and the problem is that there's a collision with the I2C addresses. Um, as you may know, I2C allows you to connect up to 127 devices on using two wires, which is really great. You can connect an accelerometer and a magnetometer and a light sensor and all that stuff, but only if they have unique addresses. Now, sometimes you can set the address of a device with jumpers or by pulling a pin or whatever, but oftentimes, especially for basic sensors that don't have a lot of pins on them, it's a fixed address. So you're like, oh man, what am I gonna do? I have like a fixed address for this humidity sensor or something, but I want to have multiple humidity sensors. In that case, you can use something like this, which is an I2C expander. So on the left, there is um, an I2C port, and you connect that to your Arduino. And on the right and then the bottom left, there are eight sets of data clock pins. So it's like 16 pins total, eight clocks, eight data, labeled you know, zero through seven ports. And what you can do is through I2C, before you start trying to read one of the devices, you send a special command that says, switch the I2C bus to port zero or port three or port five. And then you can continue as transparently as if there was nothing in between it. It completely transparently um, routes all your messages back and forth. The only thing is, of course, you can't connect an I2C device that uses the same address as this expander, which is OX70, but you can select the address of the expander to OX70 to Because the expander hex. takes up an address. It takes up an address, so you can't use that address, but so, you can switch it to one of eight. So once you know that, but then you can go well, then to... then you can route to anything. Okay. So basically you lose one address, which is... But you gain so much. You choose 0, 70 through hex 77, one of those. And you can short jumpers on the back of it to, to set the address. But once you've set that address, you can then have eight ports. So um, I'll go to the overhead and I can show it or I can show it in the photo. Time to go to the overhead. And I'll just show this. Um, so for example, here I've got this I2C expander and I've got a, a compass sensor and I've got a compass sensor. And these have a fixed address of um, OX1A. And so what I do is I power both. So both are powered from five volts, that's normal. And then I connect the clock and data, one of these to clock and data port six and I connect the other one to clock and data port two. So you see these are connected to different ports. And then the main port over here, which is like the master port, connects to the Arduino. And then if you look at the code, all I do is before I initialize each one of these, I just say, hey, TCA, switch the address port, uh, switch the I2C port to six or to two. And then you can transparently use any libraries. You don't have to change your library code or anything. Just before you try to talk to anything over I2C, you just have to tell the um, multiplexer switch which one you want. So it's actually a pretty nice multiplexer, easy to use. And yeah, like if you have eight of something or even more, because you can put multiples of these on, um, you can have eight, up to eight of these because you can have one on each address, uh, 70 hex through 77 hex. So you can have up to 64 of the same address item on one I2C port as long as you just send that command to tell it to switch and you just get them right. I have a feeling you're going to be using this for something soon. Tandy. Yeah. Okay. Good work, Lady Ada. And with that, 
is new products.